Another thing that came up from one of the brothers was that uh, she should be a good wife, should be able to cook and clean. While her mum's on the case looking for her husband, Nyla's come to the local mosque for a workshop on what makes a successful Muslim relationship. Yeah, and so these are all answers from some of the brothers. Uh, someone with a beautiful face and someone that is good at fulfilling my needs and be fruity. And be fruity, what does that mean? Who said fruity? Does that, does that mean like being able to make a good <laughs> fruit punch or something? Being fruity, that's from the men. That didn't come up a lot, but it came up anyway. Or shows obedience and has no deficiencies. Wears good clothing and smells nice. These are the women of paradise you're asking for. <laughs> These are not, you're asking for a woman that doesn't exist on, the, on this earth. Women and men enter a mosque separately, and inside, they aren't allowed to share the same space. So Nyla is listening to the workshop through a curtain. The reason for the segregation is, is because it is commanded upon us not to mix freely. You don't even have to be religious to appreciate that you're in a place of worship and you don't necessarily want to be distracted by the opposite sex, for instance. It's an obligation for the man to provide for his wife her needs. Because young traditional Muslims aren't allowed to date, they have no first-hand experience of how to behave in relationships. For example, she's used to shopping at Asda and you want to shop at Lidl and you say, well, OK, let's try Lidl. You go to Lidl, she's not, she's not content. She says, no, nah, it was all right, but it wasn't that good. It was all right. And the next week she says, let's go shopping. And you go, where are we going? She goes, Asda. You can't say no. I said, no, you're not going as W going Lidl. <laughs> Why? Because that's what she's used to before she married you. When you get married, you're going into partnership with your wife. 